Good morning. Uh, we'll get started now for the plenary session. Thank you all very much uh, for coming this morning. The, the first uh, plenary on the last day is always a, a chancy thing, and I hope everybody uh, uh, doesn't have whiplash from the mechanical bull and the, and, the, and the dodgems or various other assorted injuries. But it was a great, great evening last night, and uh, thanks to the, to the sponsors, RMIT, and thank you to all the, the sponsors who are up uh, on the list um, as, as you all came in. Uh, I'm Ed Pence. I'm uh, Executive Director of Crossref, uh, but I'm here today. I'm going to do a, a moderate uh, the session this morning, but also just give a quick update on a, on a project. I'm the uh, research officer uh, for uh, UKSG, and uh, the uh, research uh, subcommittee uh, was set up uh, a few years ago, uh, created by uh, Richard Getty. And um, over the last few years, it's tried to uh, look at uh, doing research, but also uh, uh, overseeing the collaborative initiatives uh, that uh, UKSG gets involved in. And uh, the, the goal is to take a strategic look at the information landscape and to try to see where their, their, their knowledge gaps or where uh, best practices uh, and best practice guidelines could be used uh, to uh, to improve uh, the information uh, supply chain. So a couple of uh, projects uh, that the research subcommittee have been involved in, um, one is the, the usage factor, which has moved over to uh, the counter organization um, that was on running for, for, for a number of years. And I think that also captures the way UKSG tries to do these things as it incubates and then often passes things on. Uh, the other major project has been KBART, uh, and that's uh, been a collaboration with, with uh, uh, NISO. And the other major project has been the uh, UKSG uh, transfer code of, code of practice. Uh, and uh, it looks like um, that will also uh, be uh, moving to a collaboration with uh, NISO as well in the, in, in the near future. So uh, with my research officer hat on, uh, if anybody's interested in joining the committee, it's a very small committee. We want to keep it relatively small, so I can't guarantee uh, everybody who might want a uh, place to be on it. But uh, but if you're interested, uh, let me know. We work uh, on conference calls, and, they, and it varies. If there's ongoing projects, may, maybe once a month, something like that. Uh, but uh, but often, you know, there there are longer time periods between between the calls. Um, but one thing that's going to be uh, that the research subcommittee is going to be working on is uh, what I'm going to just talk about now for a few minutes to give a quick update on a, a project, um, a very important study that's uh, just getting underway. It's called Assessing the Impact of Library Discovery Technology on Content Usage. Uh, UKSG is collaborating with, uh, with, with JISC, uh, specifically the, the PALS group, the Publishers and Library Solutions group, uh, which uh, has been involved in a, a number of different projects uh, over the year, uh, including uh, Counter. I think that's that they, they were uh, responsible for getting, getting the original uh, Counter use, Usage Stats project going. So uh, as is written up in, in um, the program, uh, the idea is to look at uh, um, uh, the landscape. There's uh, link resolvers and the OpenURL standard have now been around for a while. Uh, they're uh, uh, fairly, uh, fairly, ma fairly mature. Uh, but more recently, uh, resource discovery services uh, have seen a lot of uptake. Uh, but there's not a lot of uh, evidence. Uh, there's, a lot, there's some anecdotal evidence about the, the impact of these services, but there's a feeling that there's a, a gap here that, that could be filled. Uh, with with a study, so uh, next week uh, a tender is uh, going to be uh, released. So it'll be on the website and through the list serves, uh, and uh, it's it's calling for a study to be done, uh, most likely between the May and uh, September period. It's going to involve uh, quantitative data, so looking at usage stats, uh, website analytics, and activity logs from uh, discovery tools. It will also uh, have uh, qualitative feedback, so uh, use uh, cases, uh, feedback, and commentary from uh, parties in the information uh, supply chain. And really, it's going to look at you know seeing if usage fluctuations uh, correlate or or don't correlate with uh, um, introducing and the implementation of uh, library discovery uh, technology services. <clears throat> What's nice about uh, this study is that being completed 
end of September time frame, um, it'll be just in time for the uh, November uh, Global Forum. Um, uh, you may be aware that uh, NISO is having its usual November one-day conference, but also adding on a global for forum. There'll be some uh, extra information coming out about that um, uh, next month. Uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, the, uh, uh, the global forum will be where the results of the study uh, are presented and launched and then uh, discussed uh, during, during the day of the forum. So, so that ties in ties in very nicely. So <clears throat> keep, an eye, keep an eye out for, uh, for when this uh, study, uh, study goes out. And, and just to note also that um, uh, to give uh, um, uh, recognition to uh, Sarah Price, who's been on the research subcommittee and the UKSG committee, she really uh, got, this, uh, got this going and has stuck with getting this study done. And we're very, very near to getting it done. So um, I think it'll uh, give some really valuable information to the, to the industry. So that's all I wanted to, to say about that. We can move on to, uh, to our main uh, speakers this morning. Um, we have uh, uh, two speakers this morning uh, who many people should, should already know. So first up, we have uh, Liam Ernie, who's going to be talking about uh, knowledge bases and KB plus and go KB.